<laughs> Little rock organ for Skip. Welcome back to Grok Talk, brought to you by GraniteRock.com and the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. You can visit us at GraniteRock.com. You can visit them at, visit them at cnht.org. And please do that. Hit the tip jar, hit the donate button, help out your local grassroots activists in New Hampshire. We're going to move on to a slightly shortened segment uh, with Max Abramson, who has had an interesting week. That's uh, putting it lightly. An understatement. Tell us about your interesting week, Max. Uh, it started with a series of uh, phone calls, three or four phone calls a day from news reporters, um, interviews. Um, then I started getting a, a, a pretty good series of uh, emails and contacts and personal messages. Some were from fellow state reps. Some were from uh, friends and neighbors. But most of, most of it was from the news media. Um, Asking me, you know, the Speaker of the House is, is very surprised to find that you have this prior self-defense case and, and prior conviction, and I had been appointed to the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee, which was my, my first choice. Now, there's a story behind that story that a lot of people have missed and a lot of journalists didn't know about. We've had a lot of senior Republicans pulled off of their, their committees, their committee assignments. Um, and, in fact, from the Criminal Justice Committee's uh, Representative Gagne and Tasker were both pulled, and that's that's an unprecedented act. Even Terry Norelli didn't do things like that. It's 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 almost unheard of to have state representatives. Kyle's got to be pissed. No, he's not happy with it. <laughs> oh my God, I would never want to make him mad. About it. <laughs> I mean, I have. That's why I know. But you know, anyway. So, uh, Representative Bates has been removed from the Elections Committee. Uh oh. Who is, Who's a former chair? We had Guy Comtoyan telling us about a couple of those examples, but we didn't have all the time for that much detail. Yeah. Representative so. Ober has been removed from county and local, and a num- number of other people have just been pulled, and they weren't notified, they weren't asked, they were simply pulled. This is Lynn Ober. Um, I think Russell Ober. Okay. Yeah, because wasn't Lynn Ober a vice chair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh boy. Yeah, the, there have been many, many experienced senior Republicans, and a lot of. A lot of voters, including independent voters, are now asking, well, you know, why are they taking all this expertise off? Is this politically motivated? And so now all that has culminated in Jasper removing me from the Criminal Justice Committee. Now, I I received a message from Jasper himself last night via Facebook, and he said... (laughs) The chosen choice for communicating with your reps about... (laughs) The way that I was, the way that I found out about this, wasn't from Jasper's office. Mm-hmm. Um, I received a phone call yesterday afternoon after all the news media had been contacted by press release of Friday afternoon press release, and we'll let the let the listeners decide whether or not this was contact. I received a phone call. This was the first notice that I'd been removed from that committee. It was Friday afternoon that I started getting calls from reporters again asking me. What my reaction was to being removed from that committee, it's, it's a committee I've been testifying in front of as a private citizen for 10 years. I've been very active in criminal justice reform issues for many, many years, wrongful convictions, prosecutorial misconduct, forensic issues for a very long time, and self-defense issues. And I even have a bill in, um, which has not been given a bill number yet, but it's to simplify the two definitions. There are two conflicting definitions for deadly force in New Hampshire. Um, w- and they're both subjective, they're both open to interpretation, um, and they frequently conflict with each other. And so emergency responders and private citizens can have a hard time and might hesitate in the event of a real emergency if they have to act in an emergency to stop some danger or some dangerous criminal or, or some emergency from getting out of hand. Almost anything that you do could be twisted around by the prosecutor to mean deadly force. And if you get convicted, which I did in my self-defense case, there's no way to figure out whether the jury thought that I'd used deadly force or non-deadly force. There's no evidence from the witnesses to suggest that I did either one, but there's no way to, there's no way to, to put those put those two definitions together so um, those uh, self-defense issues were issues that that need to be brought forward because it it, that that gets to your your basic fundamental right to survive and your right to be free from crime 
you know, that I've, I've been a long time um, spokesman for the idea that government should first do no harm. The criminal justice system in particular should do, first do no harm. Shouldn't make crime worse, which a lot of prosecutors are just singling people out, and especially if they've acted lawfully in self-defense to stop a crime, um, as I did. Um, and the, the, the problem is that Jasper's office contacted the press. They didn't even CC me a, a press release. And Jasper contacted me afterwards at, I think, 9.30 last night. And he told me, well, we did contact you. That was that canceled meeting. That's what that was going to be. About. <laughs> and, again, we'll let the listeners decide if that's contact or not. But I never received a phone call, not an email, not a message. So all they nothing. did is they set up a meeting, which we knew about. And right. then we were going to talk about the meeting today. And so they just canceled the meeting. Didn't tell you why they canceled the meeting. They just canceled the meeting. And then... Well, no, to be fair, I canceled the meeting. Oh, okay. And here's the reason. I had a, a tremendous number of senior state reps and people who've done, dealt with Jasper and representatives from all over the state. And they warned me, you know, many, many times, do not go into that meeting alone mm-hmm. because it will be... The, it will be the three of them and just you and afterwards it'll be your word against theirs and they'll be able to just make up anything that they want to yeah. now so, i to be fair i don't know sean jasper and i'm not going to to say that he's dishonest or would do anything um dishonest but i've had so many people who've worked with him over the years tell me and warn me that he doesn't have um any integrity and this so, is so one reason was this going to be a one-on-one meeting uh, max a one-on-three meeting See oh, all, all, th- three of his henchmen? Well, Jasper, his attorney, house counsel, and one of his guys. Oh, that would be, no, not Ed Mosca, but um, Chuck Douglas. Mm. You know, here's the, here's the thing. When you say his word against my word, you always bring one of those things with you. Always a camera. And you say, if you can't say it on camera... Then there's something wrong. I would have brought Al Baltasar with me if I had the choice. <laughs> well, yeah, that's another. <laughs> but 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 serious, something like that. They're not. That they don't like it. They probably would have canceled the meeting. But you know, it, we are hearing the vengeance, the retribution, and all of that. He's the Democrat appointed Speaker of the House. Sean Jasper is living up to every single low expectation. You know, most people set a high bar to jump over. We put ours low to see if he can go underneath. And he that's working. It's working. Well, <laughs> some sort of breaking into song about friends in low places or something? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not singing today. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, we, ha- we have to be clear. It's Democratic House leadership. It's, it's not your average Democratic state representative. Now, there are a lot of Democrats who are left-leaning and just they just see the world differently, and a lot of them are there to serve, and they've come from, you know, politically liberal or Democrat-leaning districts, and, you know, we're working across the aisle with, with, with a good number of them. But it's House leadership. It's a Democratic leadership that, that really made that backroom deal on the morning of the organizational meeting. Yeah, it's here. Somebody's pulling the strings. And, you know, we had the the talk earlier with Guy Comtois about the rule of calling for a roll vote and having to have 20 people second the motion and do it in a hurry. So it has to be almost pre-planned. Again, for the accountability. We know Democrats don't like the accountability. You know, they, they love the dark shadows. They hate the bright flashlights. So this is just another case that, you know, the question can be asked. Did he remove you just because, or was he asked to remove you for whatever reason? I mean, you, you came out with a litany of other names. Who's pulling those names? Who's actually saying, well, we don't want this person here, don't this person here, this person, you know, get, get rid of them? Is he acting with respect to the majority caucus or the Democrat caucus? Who's pulling the strings? Who's, who's the Rasputin behind the throne? ta hmm. And no one knows. And the problem is, even sitting as state representatives in Representatives Hall, sitting in our chairs, you know, we have the Republican caucus. Of course, I can't 
in the House Republican Alliance Caucus. We can't discuss what, what was discussed in those meetings, but you can probably guess. <laughs> um, and But the, the Democratic Caucus was it a caucus is exempt from the right to know law as long as it's all members of one party who are there discussing strategy now at the democratic caucus jasper himself was there probably a number of his other people were there so that was a bipartisan caucus where they're making decisions that affect everyone in the state. Roll, roll that back again, please. So there's an exemption to the right to know law. The right to know law says that public policy decisions must be made in public if it affects taxes, spending, mm -hmm. crime, criminal justice reform, right to bear arms, due process, yep. health care. And we get this separate caucus bit, but now what's that bit about bipartisan? So, well, Jasper ran as a Republican. Yeah. Um, so when he goes to the Democratic caucus and they're making these deals and having their little talk, that's no longer a partisan caucus. That's no longer a strategy meeting. Now that is something that must be, according to some people's interpretation of the right to know law, must be made public. Um, Ooh. And there's there's an angle to that. Um, if someone requests that, if, if any private citizen in New Hampshire were to re to request the minutes of that and the details of that, that's all supposed to be public. The meeting itself, if it was a bipartisan meeting to discuss public policy, it really should have been something that was that was made public to everyone in the state, not something that was kept secret as a, as a partisan and caucus. And they meeting. know he was there. We, well, we know for a fact that he was there because he was, well, Do Democratic representatives told us he was there talking to them. And you, the party leadership... We need to get names. We need names. Yeah, because we'd be happy to, um, as private citizens, file a right to no request for the contents of the meeting. Yeah. Absolutely. Even I, I don't expect to get them, nope. but I certainly expect that if we apply enough pressure, the press will report it. Well, the other thing I want to do a, a request of is, you know, the majority leader's office, or whatever it's called, the Republican Majority Office under Democrat-appointed Speaker Sean Jasper, put out a list of, here's what we want to do. And one of them was cutting the size of government. Well, what's your baseline? How are you going to say, here's your starting point, here's your end point? Have they explained that to you as being part of the Republican caucus? Did they actually say, here's how we'll measure this? So at the end of the session, it's it can actually be substantiated. Well, we cut government because here's what it was before, he here's what it is now. It shows up in the press. They don't actually talk to him. That's interesting because <laughs> Bill O'Brien sometimes gets a little bit of flack and a little bit of elbow in the shoulder for talking about details of details. He's always talking about budgetary numbers and little facts and details yeah. that, that are important, but, you know, he doesn't give the nice, simple message. If you look at your bottle of Mountain Dew, the front is, you know, that's what consumers see. They see Mountain Dew. Actually, I didn't realize they cut down the number of letters, but the, the, they send a very <laughs> simple message so that you recognize it immediately. Marketers, advertisers, they send a very simple, oversimplified message. Very few people turn the bottle around and sit there and look at the list of ingredients. Bill yes. O'Brien gets good into good reason the list in that of case. ingredients. And, and I'll go ahead. So I'll, maybe I'll get lucky and Pepsi will send me some money. <laughs> I doubt it, but that's all right. Even though I'm not drinking nearly as much, or well, hardly any as much as what I used to. Anyways, but, uh, but those are the kinds of the things that we need to know about, the public needs to know about. And I'm seeing this curtain of obscurity starting to fall. Why were these changes made to personnel on different committees? Why is this the rules changing? You know, who is, again, I hate to keep putting it this way, but who's pulling the strings? So so weren't there a set of committee assignments that were published, and are these changes to that published set? So no, they're just taking people that have been on those committees for years and yanking them off, basically pulling all the experienced Republicans out of these committees. They're not pulling experienced Democrats out, correct? Correct. Correct. So basically this is a give to the Democrats. They're going to give all the experienced people – who are Democrats, they're going to let them basically take over because... So who are the 
Who are the Republicans being replaced by? Is it more Democrats or is it wishy-washy right. ja- wish, wishy, wishy-washy. wishy-washy Jasper supporting uh, Republicans, the, 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 the sort that became um, well, majority there were, leader, for there example? There were a couple of A reps, but we've also got some reps, the HRA, House Republican Alliance. It's 118 votes every session that are on Republican platform issues. Speck Bowers, Bill O'Brien, and a number of others have, have have tracked certain bills that mm-hmm. track with the and Republican. we use those rates all the time. And a, a handful of the of mm-hmm. the recent appointees have a records, but the vast majority of them are fifty, sixty, seventy percent voting with. Other than business issues, they're voting with the Democrats more often than the Republicans. And they complain right. about us for pointing this out. Gee whiz! Well, you know, interestingly enough, um, Guy was saying that um, Mr. Speaker. Uh, stated in or, or, or alluded to cost in terms of roll call votes and trying to, to lessen those because it costs so much money to do a roll call vote. Well, if people with experience, subject matter experience in a committee, have been taken off of that committee and replaced with someone less informed, been placed on a committee where they do not have subject matter experience, what's the learning curve involved here? And what does that do in terms of time lost? Does it, one, give new people a chance to cross-train, if you will? Or does it allow them to be run roughshod by people who say, look, we, we've done this, we were, you know, two years ago we did this, Bill, and we've done this and, and move on. We're going to take 60 seconds and come back with Max. We're not going to do a full break. We'll be right back. Hang on. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW New Hampshire Family Radio and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Rock Talk. Oh, more rock auger. Yes, we are back. We are Grok Talk, a production of GranitRock.com, New Hampshire's leading conservative libertarian b- political blog site where we just love to annoy people because they've asked for it, frankly <laughs> s- spoken. Uh, we are here. This is the first Saturday in January. We are continuing Grok Talk, and we're, it's been a very full show so far. We are talking with Max Abrams right now about... His kerfuffle, which uh, behind the scenes we understand that the strings are being pulled, and the Democrat appointed Speaker of the House, New Hampshire House, Sean Jasper, is is getting pulled. But you got pulled from a committee, and uh, you're telling us about other stuff. And really, we've kind of delved into some other stuff. And this is a great topic because this is the this is the internal workings of the sausage factory, and that's something. You know, political junkies are very familiar with. We know how this goes, and we're always eager to find out about it. But we wish more ordinary citizens who basically believe government is something we shouldn't have to worry about at all. Guys, you got to start worrying about it because stuff's happening. And I want to say thanks to Max for uh, bringing some of this to you, to us. But, uh, Susan, you've got a question. Well, no, it's, it's, it's a continuation of, of that uh, thought. In that if if Mr. Speaker is concerned about wasting money in roll call votes, why is he not also equally concerned about wasting money by not allowing the people's representatives to use their talents to the very best effort? So if I've um, elected a representative, and and partly because I know that he's a fiscal expert or he's an education expert or he's a in my case, a a Second Amendment expert or constitutional expert, and he's put on um, uh, the doily-making committee, is that not an insult to his intelligence and an insult to the trust that I've put in this person who's told me that I'm going to go and make a difference because I can contribute freely my expertise 
to the process. I think it's cheating New Hampshire voters, and I think it's incredibly dishonest. And um, I know one representative who, who works full-time, who, by the grace of God and a, and a wonderful employer, lets him go to session day and to his committee day, pulled from that committee, and now put on a committee that meets twice a week plus session day. So he's either going to have to miss one day of committee work or he's going to have to quit his job or he's going to have to leave the house. These are, these are untenable um, positions for people have to, to, to have been placed in by someone who, who may or may not have our best interests at heart. So. Rock Talk.